from the Philippines, welcome to the GCN show. Yeah. From Dubai, welcome to the GCN show. Hey mom and dad, and welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. This week we look at the future of bike manufacturing, possibly. Plus, there's been a mountain of racing, including the Dubai Tour, Valencia, and the Tours of Qatar. Yeah, and of course, all of our usuals, like tech, comment, caption, tweet of the week. Have I missed anything? Cycling shorts. Loads. Loads. All of those, plus more. Tech of the week this week sees Michelin launch new tyres for the first time in, I don't know, like five years or something. They are called the Power Range. Wow. Ooh, yeah, which is very cool. But what's interesting is that they're being marketed on their low rolling resistance characteristics. So apparently the new tyre is 10 watts more efficient, uh, I don't know, the industry standard of 40 can hour, than their previous model. That it is pretty feels good. like rolling resistance is almost a new aero, doesn't it? Katie Fretch is talking about how much it saves as well, 15 watts for the Victoria tyre that we that's saw over in Dubai. It's massive. Yeah, that it's is. worth thinking about for sure. Absolutely massive. Well, that certainly is very interesting indeed. But if you've got an eye for a Kickstarter campaign, take a look at this one. Now, Queen of the Mountains is a women's specific cycling clothing range that wants a slice of the market. And from what we've seen so far, this kit looks pretty good. It does look really good, doesn't it? Will your next bike be 3D printed? Well, it's unlikely, but you might want it to be when you've seen this. Wow. Yes, this is a fully functional 3D printed stainless steel bike uh, designed by a team of students over at TU Delft using a process from Dutch company MX3D. So what they've come up with is a 3D printer which allows metals and resins to be 3D printed in mid-air or kind of in mid-air hmm. without need of a support structure. My word. Now, we've got no idea about the performance of this bike, although you can see, look, it is actually rideable. Apparently it weighs about the same as a normal steel bike, whatever that is. But, let's face it, it's just about the looks, isn't it? That is incredible. It is, to be honest, with you, it's a sculpture, it's absolutely beautiful, but I'd imagine a little bit of a challenge to clean. Yeah, yeah. although good for internal cable routing. Mm. Yeah, now, what is interesting though, is the fact that there are quite a lot of 3D printed components popping up in various different places in the cycling industry now. So there's a British company called Bowman Cycles that 3D print uh, a chainstay bridge to attach mud guards to. Most of the major manufacturers will 3D print prototypes. And in fact, I've heard about one or two 3D printed titanium dropouts as well. And Brad Wiggins, don't forget, in his hour record, used individualized 3D printed bars too. Yeah. So I think the question's quite legitimate. Will your next bike be 3D printed? The answer to the question could very well depend on when you're planning to buy your next bike, I guess. Imagine that though, downloadable mm. bikes. What, you mean like print it out yourself? Yeah. My word. <sighs> Watch this space. It's the future. Yeah. yeah. Time now for the caption competition. Pause. Now, oh. last week we had a picture of Lasty struggling his way up the Koppenberg laden with stuff. Now, lots of entries as usual, but the winner is Franco McSherry, who said, Last he does his littlest hobo impression. Maybe tomorrow I want to settle down. But until, until tomorrow, tomorrow I'll, I'll just keep, keep moving on. We only chose that so we could sing. Mm. Uh, well done, get in touch with us via Facebook and we shall send you out some GCN swag in the post. This week's photo, meanwhile, is this new magazine cover. Unlimited, I think, is the name of the magazine. Mm. It's Chris Froome uh, in the air with his Pinarello Dogma. Taking so I will get it started. Seriously guys, can I look at my stem now? Please can I look at my stem? It's very good actually. Thanks yeah, that's not bad. Uh, I'm sure yeah. our viewers can do better. Mm -hmm. And as per usual, all you've got to do is leave your entries in the comment section just down below this video. His trousers are probably right for some kind of caption, aren't they? Yeah, maybe roll with that. You could win one of these. Etix Quicksteps, Marcel Kittel, announced his return to form in emphatic style with two stage wins and the overall at the Tour of Dubai, only missing out on stage two because he was caught down in a crash. Yeah, possibly his most impressive performance though came on the stage that he didn't win, stage three. Uh, that finished up the wall that is the Hatter Dam. Juan Jose Lobato, incredibly impressive to win that, but Marcel Kittel hauled his large body all the way up that into sixth place, which was what gave him the chance of winning the overall. That flight, is impressive. It? Now, Team Sky's uh, Flying Dutchman, Wout Pauls, won the Tour of Valencia in emphatic style. Can we say he bossed it? Pretty I much think did. he certainly did. He won the opening time trial and the Queen stage, but 
most impressively, he mopped up every single stage classification. No, not stage classification, what are they called? Classification. Uh, classification. Classifications en route as well. well. That must be down to a certain massage, I think, from uh, Mr. Matt Stevens. Quite possibly. Have you seen, seen how good his right leg looks? He said they got soft hands as well. Anyway, <laughs> moving along. Some other highlights from the Tour of Valencia included Dan Martin's win on stage two, perfectly timed attack to take his first win in its it's quick step colours, but arguably the most exciting moment of the whole race came on the final stage, finishing in the centre of Valencia, when Stein Vandenberg took his first win since 2007, holding off the bunch by a single second, but get this, riding for the last five kilometres with a plastic bag wrapped around his back <laughs> wheel. It was pretty amazing stuff. It actually led team owner, or the owner of Etics, to tweet, this is from Mark Cook, Goose, whatever that means, at Etics Quickstep, so happy with the victory of VDB Stein Cycling. And we don't motorbike, we recycle on the go. And we think we know what he's talking about there. Apart from the goose bit, perhaps. Yeah, we don't know what the goose bit is at all. Now, Chris Froome did not disappoint the many fans who turned out to watch him at the Herald Sun Tour last week. He took the overall victory ahead of his teammate Pete Kenyo, but he did look at a point like he was using the race as training. He tweeted this picture of his breakfast, which was only avocado and boiled eggs. Would that be low carb training? That does look like low carb training, doesn't it? Hmm, interesting. Anyway, uh, Trixie Warwick got the Canyon SRAM team off to a cracking start. She won the Women's Tour of Guitar ahead of the Bolt Dolmans duo of Romy Casper and uh, Anna Van Dyke. Yeah, and the men's race also kicked off on Monday, very fast at the start, broke up into echelons immediately, 52 k's an hour in the first hour. Oh. Uh, a select group came into the finish line together, Mark Cavendish took the first win of his season, and of course his first win since joining Dimension Data. What was your best result with the Tour Guitar then? Uh, fourth overall. <whistles> yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. Yeah, so now I'll, I'll definitely give you a high five for that. It's time now for Hack forward slash bodge kind of, of the week. Keep up. Right, now we're going to start off with actually a comment left under one of our videos, the uh, how to get a completely clean chain. I was complaining about getting oil on your hands and struggling to clean it off. So experiment 54 suggested that you use a bit of washing up liquid and then a teaspoon of sugar to act as like a bit of an ag abrasive paste. Oh, mm -hmm. I bet that would work. We need to I try know. that. I oh, would definitely do that. That's amazing. Thanks. Oh, that sounds pretty good, that does. Right, Heinrich Le Breton. Uh, wrote in on Twitter. Now you remember this uh, bike rack stand that we had over the bath a couple of weeks ago on GZN? Yeah. Well, he wrote in saying, well, if that was good, then this one's got to be even better. Uh, next level R&D for cycling flat dwellers. And he's probably right. That is also incredible. Maybe even Serious more so hack. than the previous one. Could you let us know though how you clean your bathroom after? Because like, the idea about like oil oh, dripping on your, on your bath. Yeah. He probably oh. uses fairy liquid combined with sugar. Oh, I yeah, tell you what, scrubbed onto the side yeah. of the bath. Good yeah. point, Dan. Anyway, moving on rather swiftly. This is on Twitter. This is from a professional cyclist Alex Howes with a blue tick. Rides with Cannondale. Look at that for a pair of shoes. My Shimano road shoes are all sealed up and ready for winter. I thought they were customs, but look closely. Yeah, and they're not. That is a proper hack. That you know, from a distance, that looks like a pair they of cool shoes. Pimpy. I really like those. As opposed to shoes covered in gaffer tape, mm. which is kind of a bit of a bodge, I guess. Now we've got to leave it, okay, with this very cool. Mm. Bodge from GMBN RS System yeah. Mountain Bike. Got to have it too. Check it out. They have made made an aero mountain bike. <laughs> Look at that. I don't think that was possible. They did a good job with cardboard. Oh, I thought. Fair play. Saved it quite a lot of time. Watch. Go over to GMBN and watch the full video to see how much an aero mountain bike can save. Mm. Not until the end of this show, though. No, just make yeah, yeah, make, make sure that we want to keep the tension rate up. Yeah, don't forget to send us your hacks and bodges. You can do it the same way. Hashtag GCN Hack on Instagram or on Twitter. And don't forget your forward slash. Cycling shorts now, and we were going to start with some really good news from here in the UK. So, according to Transport for London, who are the authority in charge of transport in London, uh, they have reported that soon bikes might outnumber cars in the centre of the city. So, mm. they've got statistics to back this up. Car use has more than halved in the last 14 years, from 138,000 to 64,000 per day, whereas bike use over the same period has tripled from 12,000 to 36,000. So admittedly, it's still somewhere off, but I reckon if you plot a graph, it would look quite positive. Mm, it would. Like that. Uh, anyway, I've got a question for you both, and for you at home, actually. Uh, is Sylvain Chavanel the first professional rider ever to win a race whilst wearing sneakers or trainers? Uh, looking at that picture, I think maybe yes. he is, yeah. Look. Nice work, Sylvain. <laughs> yeah. 
Amazing, obviously watch your video on flats versus clips. Yeah, you should do that. You wouldn't have to clip in ever. No. You might have won a race. Shabba. Well, you did win a few, didn't you? Shabba. Uh, right, you remember a couple of weeks ago on the GCN show, we spoke about the horrific crash that Giant Alpsin had out training in Calpe with a number of riders quite severely injured. Uh, there's some good news and some bad news. The good news is that they will all make a complete recovery and Chad Hager has had all his many stitches removed. The bad news is with John Dagenkolb, who unfortunately will not be back to defend his Milan San Remo and Paris Bay title this year. Yeah. Well, best of luck to everybody from uh, here at GCN. Yeah, I'm gutted about that actually. Yeah. 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 Now, changing the tune slightly, uh, do you know what a hack bike derby is? No. Nope. No, no, neither did I. I. But, turns out, it's flipping cool. It's basically what happens when a load of top UK custom frame builders get together and organise a bike race. So, they each had to build a vintage style mountain bike clunker and then race them. Now, whether or not February in the UK is the right time to host this event, does look slightly grim, but the bikes look amazing, and I was wondering whether we might be able to borrow some of them for a GCN versus GMBN. Clip. That would be that cool. Sound like a good. That would be. I fancy our chances at that. Yeah, that would be yeah, good. yeah we'd, we'd take that easy. Pretty much. Well, from hack bikes across to cyclocross. Now we know it's the end of the cyclocross season. Pretty much done and dusted now. But Mathieu van der Poel, the former uh, champion of cyclocross in the world, or world champion as they call it, yeah, rambled a bit then, but there we go. He's got his eyes firmly set on Rio in mountain bike. And now he's openly admitted he hasn't got a lot of experience on riding mountain bikes, but his eyes are firmly set. Interesting. Yeah. Didn't that hold you back in 1996 either, did it? I had, a, I, had a, I had a five race career. Mm. <laughs> now what it might do actually is it might help him get one over arch nemesis Wout van Aert. Ooh, yeah. because. Got to give a bit of a hats off to Wout van Aert. He has whitewashed the cyclocross season. So he's world champion. He is the World Cup champion. He's the Super Prestige Series champion, or will be next week, hopefully. Mm -hmm. B-Post Bank Trophy Series champion. Belgian champion. The only thing he hasn't won is the European champs. But uh, And he's got tinted hair as well. He does have tinted And he wears black shorts with his world champs kit. Fair oh, play. so he doesn't need to do well, any more whitewashing in cyclocross. Ooh. Good joke there. Uh, right, we should finish Cycling Shorts this week with a very special shout out to young Jens Decker. Now, he won the Junior World Cyclocross event in Zolder, where you two boys were at last week. And he wrote into us on Twitter this week saying, What has a guy got to do to get a mention on the GCN show? The Fair answer enough. to that is there are a few things you can do, but definitely winning the World Championships and writing into us. Well, that is a definite. Yeah. Well, so, very shampoo. well done to shampoo Jens. Great to riding. Jens. Yeah. It is a bit cruel, isn't it, if he'd done a major bodge? on his bike for the Worlds, he would have got a shout out. He would have done. Yeah, but he, like he, he, won, he just, just won a yeah, rainbow jersey stick instead. Stick a motor in there, Jens, and you'd be right on the show. Nice one, Jens. <laughs> Time now for Dom's tweet of the week. Now, the first of Dom's tweets he's chosen comes from Mr. Bill Strickland, the editor, I believe, of Bicycling Magazine, at True BS, good one there, Bill, says, confession, my bike has a motor. Problem, it weighs around 170 pounds these days, has hairy pistons, and isn't good for much more than an hour. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, nice one, Bill. Uh, the second tweet from Dom comes from Lee Howard, professional rider. He says, nice little going away present from Qatar Airways. Never know what the rules are these days. Every time it changes. And he's been charged over 1,000 US dollars to transport his bikes to the race. That is brutal. I tell you what, actually, Whoa. I'm really interested to know who has paid the most amount of excess baggage to get a bike back from somewhere? The worst story I've ever heard was Thomas Frischnick, so the uh, top uh, Swiss mountain bike and cyclocross rider. On his way back from the Olympics in Sydney in 2000, uh, Swiss Airlines tried to charge him so much to take his Olympic bike back that he sold it at the airport. Literally, he was just like, sold it, screw you guys. And basically, he just got rid of Who's a he piece it of to? history. Just some random dude just at some dude for, you know, a thousand bucks. Blimey. Well, I, I can't beat that story. Can you beat it? I can't. Time now for comment of the week. First up, James Nicholas. This is under Dan's interview with Cav from Dubai the other day. James says, Dan, that's a Cervelo that Cav's riding. You should try one someday. Test one out. <laughs> that was actually quite good, I must admit. It's great, great uh, Comment number two comes from Patrick Aradon. This was underneath the what has changed in pro cycling interviews I did with the riders in Dubai. Uh, I'm new to the sport. Can please someone explain full gas? I thought their bikes were electric. <laughs> Very good. Nice. This last one, uh, which I really caught my attention, from Nation Harris. Is the tree trying to look like Dan? Or is Dan trying to look like the tree? Which is a, somewhat of an existential question, but whatever the answer, they do look similar. 
On the channel this week, on Wednesday, we have how to get back from a cycling injury. Don't make the classic mistake of trying to get back onto the bike too early. Work with a doctor on an exercise-based rehab program. Also, a therapist or personal trainer can help to address any bad movement patterns that you've developed or any muscle imbalances, which will help to prevent injury again in the future. On Thursday, we have the top 10 ways to increase your average speed. And no, having a motor isn't one of them. Whilst aerodynamics won't save you much on the climbs, it'll save you a huge amount on flat and downhill sections. And quite often, you won't need to change anything at all on the bike. On Friday, Sai puts to the test how much faster are modern bikes. He did so by riding the 1985 welter winning bike of Pedro Delgado. And then Saturday's pro bike is the Cervelo S5 of Mark Cavendish. Sunday is off the back as usual and then on Monday we show you how to fit aero bars to a standard road bike. Mm. To good effect I think. Tuesday it's back here, not on the sofa but on chairs, but don't forget Friday is the second edition. First of 2016, it's the GCN quiz. Hold on tight, you know what's coming next. Time now for Extreme Corner. Now we've got a really cool little edit for you this week from Rocky Mountain. Too fat, too furious. This looks like a lot of fun. It did look like quite a good fun, I must admit. Well, following on from Mark Cavendish's first win of the year in Qatar, how about checking out Dan's interview with that very man by clicking just up here. Yeah, or oh, another really good bit that Dan shot out in Dubai, without wishing to give you a big head, mate, uh, was checking out the new tech on offer with Velo News' Kenny Fretz, because that's just down there. It's too late, big head thing. Uh, and to subscribe to the channel, it's the button down in the middle there somewhere. Just next Probably. to Dan's massive head. Probably just in this, if I do that little voguing bit, you can just get it in there. That's ambitious, mate. I reckon it's not going to be there. No? Anyway, you know what to do. Okay, changing tack for a moment. Do you know what a hack bike does? Are you drinking fake tea? Uh, no, I was going to just add something to the show, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really nice and natural. People, this is just like real life. It's not fake, you've got something in it. I actually improved your acting. Oh, you have got, some, got something. Got some in there. Oh, I I it real tea, yeah. folks. Real tea, events. Right. Changing tack for a moment. Have you ever heard... <laughs> <laughs> 